apologize for the quality if the uh, stream kind of goes wonky, but uh, I'm kind of doing some stuff on the internet uh, for the channel that I kind of can't get away from or stray from, so sorry for the bad connection. But today I want to talk to you guys about what makes a good fly reel. Um, different species of fish require different things from the reels, but I kind of wanted to go through the way I pick reels and things um, and uh, how I decide basically, basically for what my purposes are for. So, first off, let's start on the small end. Um, if I'm fishing a one, an odd, you know, a zero weight through a three weight, even a four weight, um, sometimes even a five weight, what's going on? Um, I typically don't concern myself too much with drag. Now, I will either fish click and paul, but if I'm not fishing um, a classic style reel, the reels that I'll choose don't really, aren't really heavily dependent on uh, the drag because typically up to five, six weight, um, when you're fishing for trout, panfish, even bass, um, realistically, grayling even, you're not going to be putting fish on the reel. Happy holidays to you, my friend. Um, and so, for example, this right here is a max catch. Um, thanks, Paulie. Um, this is a max catch reel that I bought a long time ago, and uh, it, uh, you can see I fish it very frequently. Um, it's a three weight reel, two three weight reel, and I, I use it primarily on nymphing rods and things when I'm fishing for um, very small fish. Uh, even some bigger trout, you don't really typically put them on the reel. The only fish that I put on the reel usually are trophy fish, um, as far as trout go. I mean, like anything over, I would say, 16 inches around my, my waters is a trophy trout, um, excluding steelhead. So, uh, and we'll get into what reels I use for those later, but um, I basically use these to hold line, hold my line, hold my backing, and in fact, the majority of my reels this size, I don't even put backing on. I just attach the reel right to it, or I use a little bit of, um, of braid as my backing, like braided, whether it be Cast King or God Line by Fishing for Sure. Um, you know what? Thank you. It's the vintage trout tea, Polly. Um, uh, but I don't get fish to my backing. I don't ever get fish hardly on the reel itself. I just play it by hand. So this is a very small line. Um, this is a two weight line on a three weight, three weight reel. Uh, so I have some extra room. It does have a solid drag on it, but I, <laughs> I barely even use the drag. The only reason I use the drag is so I don't end up spooling myself when I pull more line out. So small, small reels for small stuff. Um, don't really concern yourself with buying a bunch of really expensive stuff. I will buy reels that have a warranty just so that in case I drop something or bend something, but for the majority of the time, I I barely even, I think that's a $18 reel, I think, from Max Catch, and it's even cheaper with my coupon code when this video is no longer live. Um, for my 5, 6, 7, 8 weight reels, um, I'm sorry, 5, 6, 7, uh, <laughs> Spooled be, spo uh, left to reel. Well, you can change most reels now from left to right handed. Um, there'll probably be a different video. I actually have a video for that on my channel. But uh, for reels in the 5, 6, 7 range, if you're not fishing for game fish like steelhead or salmon or um, like if you're using it for trout or bass, I still will fish either click and paul or if I'm fishing a, a, a dragged system, um, I don't fish salt very often. But I will fish things that are inexpensive. Still, obviously, whether it be aluminum or or, or um, an alloy, I still fish those because they last a little longer. But I don't concern myself too much with uh, the drag system because, again, when I'm playing fish, I'll play them. I'll I'll, I'll hold the the line with my finger and I'll but I'll play the fish in that way most of the time, um, unless I want to have a little bit of fun and I know the fish is going to stay healthy by doing so. Uh, so. I will still fish, for example, Max Catch Avid or the Cast King Cobook in those uh, sizes. Um, very inexpensive, solid stuff with warranties, and uh, I don't really concern myself too much with drag. Now, when we get into game fish like steelhead uh, or salmon, um, we're bumping up to uh, fishing heavier reels. Um, you're, this is where it kind of separates certain certain reels from others. Um, what, what I look for in a reel um, for those types of fish where I know I'm going to have to put the fish on the reel, um, I want a drag that is smooth. And what I mean by smooth is that 
when it starts up, it doesn't require additional inertia to start the reel. Um, so for example, if I have my, my, my drag down and the fish is going to pull, okay, that first initial start, I don't want any stick, okay? And another thing that most people don't remember or don't think of whenever they're picking at a reel for like steelhead, whenever you're going to be fishing in the very cold water, is cold water, freezing water. Remember that if you have a cork system, cork, if it gets wet and freezes, will slip. And so if you have a really um, poor system, see, see Polly, um, and the you're in really cold weather, sometimes what will happen is the fish will start and it'll spool you like that. Not to say that's the end of the world, because most of the time your reels will be able to handle it if you just if you buy a nice reel. But um, by by allowing the I would say an eight-way reel could hold a small saltwater fish for sure. Um, remember, most of the time it comes down to an angler. Um, I'm sorry, I'm answering some questions from the live stream here, guys. Um, but again, for for fish that t have a tendency to have fast um, fast breaks and to, and to take off screaming on you. Uh, I want to hold a lot of backing. I want a, a, a disc system that um, requires low inertia to start and that is smooth regardless of how much pressure I put down. This is a Cascade Kobuk and it's um, I've been fairly impressed with it so far. I also have a, a couple of uh, Max Catch um, Avids and I also have um, a Qualify Ma uh, Maverick which is my salt reel. Now, going to salt is a different story. When you're going to a salt reel, um, these are all freshwater reels. You don't really need to worry about uh, you know, your sealed system too much. So when you go to a salt reel, you obviously want to make sure that it's easy to clean mm -hmm. and that it's uh, fairly self, you know, it's, it's self-sealed. Um, this one's sealed, that Kobuk is sealed, but it's not salt safe, I don't believe. Um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I don't use that one for salt. I use my Qualify. Um, Maverick in there uh, because it, it's I know it's double sealed uh, it's very similar to a Nautilus system I believe but uh, when you get into those really big game fish you want to make sure that uh, you have a large arbor you can pick up a lot of, of ground if the fish is running at you um, or it also you can retrieve more uh, and then let go and if that fish tends to go uh, it doesn't take a lot of inertia to start it up um, Hey, Erie County, New York. What's going on? Yeah, no, I, I, you know, sometimes the lower budget stuff can get somebody in. Um, I know that my my first steelhead rig that I had set up um, cost me under 150 bucks, and I had no issues landing fish on it. So congratulations to you. And sometime, if you ever want, check out my website and come up and and, uh, and I can get you into some fish. Um, but when I'm looking for for reels for for uh, very strong fish like carp steelhead. Carp don't have a tendency to want to take off on you too much. They're a little slower, whereas steelhead and salmon have a tendency like you know, to, to go on you. Um, I still incorporate this. I use the same reel for both of those fish um, because the carp require a, st a very smooth and strong drag. Not strong as far as how much it requires to pull, but strong drag in that um, it's not going to slip over time. Um, yeah. 14 is a big saltwater fish that run, yeah, like, like, uh, you can use those for, for sailfish or for, um, you rarely see people use that size reel or line for things like, um, bonefish, I don't believe, um, or from the, from the flats, you know, uh, GTs, you might want to, you might be pushing it, um, big GTs, but yeah, 14 is a big setup. One thing you also want to worry about is a real this big, not a big an issue, but when you get into some of those bigger sizes, like a 10, 12, 14, um, you want to worry about weight, you know, because you're carrying around a lot of fly line, okay, typically also, you know, intermediate or uh, fly line uh, or sinking fly line, um, that's a lot of weight if you've got all metal and it's not a, a nice uh, lightweight system. Um, uh, you, you really want to make sure that, uh, you know, for this something like this, this was if this is on my my ten foot three weight that's sitting right here. Um, I want to make sure that it, you know the longer the rod, I want to balance that out. And sometimes balance means different things for different people. So when someone says you need this reel for this rod, don't let them fool you into that because I can tell you that the, some of the suggestions that I get uh, by you know other internet personalities 
for rods and reels and things um, don't jive with my style. Uh, sometimes I'm concerned more about overall rig weight. Sometimes I'm concerned about whether or not, you know, for example, when I'm tight, ni tight line nymphing, I actually like a little bit of a bigger reel for the rod. Um, reason being is because it's going to sit here anyway, and it's going to allow the tip end to be uh, balanced out because it's a longer rod. Now, that doesn't mean that if I'm fishing all day, I actually opt out for a smaller reel because it allows me a lighter overall weight, and I will just, instead of holding the reel uh, or holding the rod back on the in, for distance, I will hold it forward more so, so that I can uh, feel it a little lighter. The question was what flies your steelhead on from in uh, Rochester. I'm assuming you're fishing either in a Rondecoit or uh, if you're looking for maybe um, like the Oak, Sandy Creek, uh, I would say probably you're good to go on egg sucking leeches. You might want to throw a few purple wet flies and even uh, some, they're, they're in, on some uh, stones um, with white biat legs and my special steelhead fly which I have a video for you can take a look at. Uh, another question, if you're looking for cheap reel, uh, L.O. Bean Quest, I absolutely, L.O. Bean makes great products, uh, even down to their waders, um, and it's 50 bucks for the reel, yep, and uh, he's a fellow steelhead addict as well, so um, uh, I'm thinking about getting a four-weight combo for creeks and street and streams for bass and trout. Um, is that too late? You should go with five weight. Um, personal preference. If you're if you're a caster who can really get those flies out there, um, and you're casting for you're using for bass like smaller woolly buggers like size tens or eights, then hey, no, a four weight's fine. I used to chuck. Actually, I think. I've I've thrown these, big call it old man Ewok, okay? These articulated big streamers. I used to throw these on four weights. And this is a double four rot hook. Um, you know, two hooks, two four rots. Uh, I used to throw these on four weights and it just depends on how patient you're, you're willing to be and how much uh, you're willing to meddle and, and mess around with your, your casting. So a five weight might be an easier time, especially if you plan on um, throwing bigger flies, but for trout, it depends on also what kind of fishing you're going to do. Are you going to be doing mostly nymphing? Uh, are you going to be Euro nymphing or, or indicator nymphing? Dry flies, streamers, it all depends. Okay, and also depends on your personal preference. I'm my, I will always say this, if you have the ability to go cast the rods that you're going to choose between first, go do that. Um, if there's a fly shop or whether you have a buddy who has rods, um, I know that before I choose rods, I always want to get my hands on them. Um, I'm fortunate enough to work with some wonderful companies that are cost effective, and so when they send out some products, I know already kind of how they're going to, to cast. So, hey, I'm fortunate in that regard. But um, I would say that if you're looking for some general suggestions, uh, small creeks, um, my definition of small is, diff is different than yours as well, but if you're going to be throwing 30, 40 feet with a... With a uh, what do you call it, with a streamer, then go with a five weight. Um, if you're going to be fishing mostly mostly uh, nymphing, uh, like you're going to be tight line nymphing or euro nymphing, then I would suggest a 10 foot, three or four weight, because um, you can that'll handle bass no problem also. Um, in fact, it's very fun. Uh, but personally, I prefer four weights over five weights because I feel like I can really um, get that flick in there and get that the trout delicacy bet down. Um, uh, but uh, that's my personal preference. Um, uh, Nick, I think I already answered your question, buddy. Um, if you guys have any more questions, please, by all means, uh, shoot them up here. Uh, we're running out of just shy of 15 minutes. If you're still in the stream, give the thumbs up. Give the stream a thumbs up, guys. It really helps the channel out. It helps uh, get the word out to the others around and, uh, and that we're trying to do things to get more anglers into the sport, okay, because it definitely uh, really helps um, when we have young guns coming in and are willing to try new things and try the cost-effective way and route uh, early on in the stages. So, uh, saltwater fly reel versus freshwater fly. Thank you for the question. Um, salt reel, uh, biggest thing usually is... Um, uh, actually, I'm going to come back to the salt versus fresh. 18-mile creek washing guys, nymph through streamers, which should I go do? Uh, 
that depends on if whatever you want to do, man. Um, I I'm in the nymphing game right now because I'm finding that as the temperatures cool down, um, we're seeing the water temps drop a little bit. Uh, nymphing is going to be the way to go, especially coronid patterns. Um, um, okay, so we're going to go salt versus versus fresh in a in a freshwater reel. Okay, freshwater reels um, may be sealed, but they're not sealed to the same e efficacy as a saltwater reel. Um, in addition, uh, even saltwater reels, I still recommend that even if you have a salt-friendly uh, reel, um, that you take the reel apart when you're done, and you rinse it or dunk it in cold or in, in fresh water, distilled water, and you do that twice. Okay, so you you, you dip it in, in distilled water, you kind of move it around, no soap or anything. Okay, you get the let the salt kind of get out of the system, and then you rinse that water and do it again. I, th I find that uh, prolongs the life of the reels, and also because it's just fresh water, uh, distilled water, then your line doesn't get ruined or anything like that either. Um, uh, also, typically, salt reels are going to be more expensive. Uh, reason being is because there's more sealing system, O-rings, and uh, different things involved that are not in fresh water and in, in fresh uh, uh, systems. In addition to um, that, also f salt reels will typically always not always, but typically because you're going to be chasing bigger fish that make really strong runs, you're going to be using drag systems rather than many salt. Many freshwater guys prefer click and pause systems. That's basically a reel that doesn't have a drag on it. The drag is created by internal mechanisms in the. I wish I had brought one down here with me, but internal mechanisms that that click as you as you both reel in and uh, you know you, the, the fish takes line. Um, they all they all different. They're all different. So uh, you know you have to try one. Okay, you can find some pretty inexpensive click ball reels even on eBay. Okay, uh, so uh, it just depends on what if you're gonna fish salt or brine water, then you definitely want a salt reel. If you're going to fish only fresh, you're only going to fish fresh, then fish the fresh. I typically, like, a, okay, if I, the reel I have right now is the Koala Fly Maverick, and that's my salt reel. Uh, I have that in a 7, 8 weight. Um, let's go back to these questions. Okay, um, I'm, gonna, I'm going fly fishing for native trout this summer in Tennessee. Any suggestions on flies techniques? I'm a Florida guy. Okay, um, here's the thing. My suggestion for you for your trip is call the fly shops in Tennessee. Call them about a week before, and even if you want to go in while you're there and buy a few flies just to support the local shops, please do so. Uh, they will know their waters better than I will know their waters. Okay. Um, some general rules, uh, though, are some general flies. Uh, it's hard to beat a hare's ear. Uh, in the wintertime, it's hard to beat midges. You know, the zebra midge, black beauties, um, Tujubatus, uh, when I'm going new places, you know, if you're going to be dry fly fishing, Adam's patterns, Adam's variants are nice, elk hair caddis. Um, there's some general rules, you know, general flies that work pretty much all over um, in one way or another, but definitely if you really want to narrow it down, uh, call up the fly shop. They will know much more about their local waters than I will since I haven't been there. Um, go up to another question here. Um, I mainly want to use a variety of flies, but when I'm targeting bass and trout, I want to throw a dry fly or egg patterns. Do you have any rods that come to mind? Okay, so you want oh for the for the small stream, okay, um, for the small stream you want to throw you want to throw eggs or dry flies. So if you're gonna do that, then I would suggest one of two things. Um, if you if you're a qualified caster, okay, and you're willing to put in some mm -hmm. patience, then a glass rod, fiberglass rod, or a bamboo rod would be right up your alley. Um, bamboo doesn't have to cost thousands and thousands. You can go on headwatersbamboo.com. Um, they have them for as low as, you know, almost 300 bucks. Um, you can also buy kits online and do your own uh, finishing of your own rod. Um, for example, you know, I have, I have a, a blank in the back, and I have, you know, cork over here, and some silk and stuff, and you can build your own rod. Um, but those are going to be great for delicacy in your presentation. So if you want to throw um, dry flies for, for trout, then I would suggest those. Um, you can also get away with throwing poppers, small poppers, for smallmouth and for, for bass um, on, the, on a 5, 6 weight also. Um, but those are usually very air resistant, okay? And so you'll require a heavier line and more line speed. 
Um, let's see here. Yeah, no problem, Brandon. Um, if you're going to be nymphing egg patterns, I would suggest a, even on a small stream, like a 10-foot rod, 9 or 10-foot rod, echo, uh, and maybe in a 3-4 weight. Um, traveling fit, I mean, yes, I'm very familiar with echo rods. Even the, like the, the echo glass is very famous. I've never fished an echo rod, though, personally. Um, let's see. Uh, um, <clears throat> let's see, let's see, let's see. Some big news for, for you guys also moving forward into the 2018 year. Um, I uh, have a bunch of new products coming, uh, hopefully very soon, to show you guys. I have a video that's that I'm struggling with right now to get up. Um, it was supposed to be up at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, 11:30 today, uh, for those lunchtime guys. Um, but <laughs> YouTube decided to pull some voodoo on me, and so it'll be up tomorrow. And that's why we're live today. I wanted to provide you guys with something. Um, I'm also looking into trying to find a way how to uh, 